Good morning, everyone. This is Hannah Carr from the Holistic Health Collective, and I am here with the Get Unstuck show. So we normally show up on a Monday morning, but of course, it was a Queen's funeral yesterday and a national bank holiday. So we wanted to honour that and uh, delay the show until today. So first of all, I thought I'd check in and see how you're doing. Um, was it nice to have that extra day off? What did that look like for you and your family? If you have a family living at home with you, um, did you go to London? Did you watch it on the TV or are you not interested in it whatsoever? We would love to hear how you are feeling about it. So the Get Unstuck show is your weekly dose of structure and practical tips to help you get through the week in a healthy way. So this is aimed at busy women who are looking for natural solutions to their health. And today we're covering a really big subject. So I'd love to hear your inputs on this one. We are talking about worthiness. And this is because this is actually showing up for me in a really, really big way to be healed at the moment. And I also see it absolutely collectively as well. But before we talk about this subject, let's talk about the moon phase. We like to bring your awareness to the moon phase that we are in. So we are currently in um, a waning crescent moon, which means we've gone past the full moon and we're heading towards the new moon. So do you follow the moon phases? Do you honour the moon phases? Let's talk about what the good things to do in this part of the moon phase is. So this is a really good time to actually release clutter from your home and to create sacred space. So you want to have a sacred space that you can go to to get clear with your thoughts, to relax, to rejuvenate your mind and your energy every single day. And the reason this is a really good phase for this to for us to do this is soon it will be the new moon and the new moon is a great time for manifesting and setting new intentions and calling in what you want. Well, how can you do that if your mind's busy? How can you think straight if your home is cluttered? So you want, we could just start with one small corner of a room it could even be your bedroom could be your sacred space right so if your bedside table is a little bit messy or you've got some um, clothes hanging around which could be put away um, take the next few days to do that and that could begin your sacred space and it might be that every single moon during this phase so before we get to the new moon that you spend a little bit of time decluttering your home which helps to declutter your mind as well so let me know if you feel like that's something that you can do today I have to say I do, I haven't got a, a particular sacred space where it's like always this space I go. If it's nice out in the garden, I'll go and sit in the garden if the sun shines there. Um, I've got a little bit of a room that I use for movement um, and chilling. So that can be a sacred space. I also like to use my bedroom. It depends how busy the house is, right? Sometimes I come up to this room, which I've got a nice hanging on the wall here as well. So I can use this room too. So I've got different places that I can go. It doesn't always have to be one, depending how busy my house is to have a little bit of quiet time but it is really really important that you do that and especially when we're going to be talking about worthiness today and you might decide to work on this a little bit you need a little bit of space to do that in okay so i want to talk about this worthiness and the reason i'm talking about it at the moment is as i say it's showing up a lot for me so i'm going to give a very simple easy example that we probably all would have experienced right and this is the frustration of someone not replying to a message now for some of you that might not annoy you at all you might completely move on from that but lots of you here especially if you've tried to make a loose arrangement with someone You've maybe tried to get it in the diary and then you send a message confirming your availability or firming up an appointment and they don't reply. Actually, I've got one today as well. <laughs> I meant to be somewhere today, but I haven't had a reply, so I don't know. Well, I'm not doing that, but um, I'm sure many of us have had this example before. And what are the feelings that come up when that happens? So it might be disappointment, frustration, anger, irritation. It's something that's beyond your control, but you want to know, right? So I was talking about this recently in a group that I'm in. So one of our members is running a, she calls it a love foundation course, actually. And I wanted to support her, so I'm part of that group with her as well. And I was using this example because she was saying, take some time to sit with your feelings every day. So I use this example. And what I believe that I needed more of was just to let that go and to bring more patience in and understanding. And what she actually highlighted, she was like, well, that's worthiness, isn't it? I was like, is it? She's like, yeah, 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 you need someone else to confirm that you're worthy, right? 
was like, oh, that's big, isn't it? That's big. I'm glad that you've highlighted this for me. So I could sit with that. And often we may feel a little bit triggered, right? We might be like, no, 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 that's not worthiness. It's just, it should, we would justify it by saying they should just, um, you know, have the politeness to reply, right? Or um, they should just reply in a good time. So we'll, we'll put it back on them again. But looking at ourselves, what is it beneath that example? But there's literally hundreds probably thousands of examples I could have chose from where worthiness comes in right what is it beneath that is it sitting beneath that I I don't feel worthy you don't feel worthy if someone doesn't reply to you well maybe that is the case so let's talk about I've written a nice mantra here that we could use you could write this down you could stick it on a mirror and you keep repeating this to to yourself or you might want to do some inner inquiry so I done some inner inquiry and one of mine that I came up with was I am inherently worthy okay but I've, I've got a nice mantra for us all today which is I am worthy of all of the love and ab abundance and amazing experiences that I want so that is one way it's like to self-soothe to keep repeating these words to keep reminding ourselves that we are worthy right you could have it on the screensaver on your phone or your computer you could have it on a um what's those yellow sticky notes called the yellow sticky notes post-it note you could have it on a post-it note on your computer screen you could have it written on a in a pen on your mirror one of those pens that you can wipe off right you could have it on a note on your bedside table so i am worthy of all of the love and abundance and amazing experiences that I want. But I'd love for you to do, invite you to do a little bit of a self inquiry about this worthiness. Now, the reason that I chose it, not just because it's come up for me, but I see it all the time as well. So someone done a course of ours recently, but said, you know, I'm not, I'm not really worth this. So that's worthiness, right? Or how do you stop yourself? Because you do not feel inherently worthy. How do you stop yourself? So I share a really good one with you because I had this when I wasn't working and I see it time and time again with busy mums, particularly if they are, um, you know, stay at home mums, if they're looking after their kids, if they're looking after the house. They will not invest in themselves. It doesn't matter whether it's a course, whether it's healthy food, whether it's new clothes, because they feel that they don't bring anything in, right? But we're actually given a lot, maybe even more in some ways, and that may be space holding, that may be cleaning, that may be emotional support, that may be arranging, that may be dropping off, that may be all the, thi all the things other than actually bringing cash into the home because you're not bringing cash you actually stop yourself buying the things that you want or need even if as a family it can uh it can be afforded so i actually saw a really good tip for this which is work out if you was to pay someone for everything that you do you work out what it would cost you and as a family the money that's coming into the family you pay that to yourself so let's say that's 800 quid a month, right? I'm just plucking a figure out the air here. 800 pound a month. You use some of that money to contribute towards the bills of the home because then you feel like you're contributing, you feel more equal. But you also save some of that money for yourself and your needs as well. So that's one way that you can overcome that. But I'd love to hear um, about worthiness and what do you think it stops you doing? And it may show up in small ways. So you may, this is one that I've heard people say, I make a bottle of water for my children for school for the day, but I don't make one for myself. Okay, I pack a lunch for my children and maybe even my partner for the day, but I just survive by grabbing a biscuit or um, something really quick, but not nourishing, right? So is worthiness showing up for you in those ways? Perhaps you stop yourself exercising or going for a walk because you believe that what you've got to do in the house or what you've got to do with work is more valuable than you. OK, and all of those things are important in their own rights. But without us, none of that can be done. And I was chatting to another coach friend about worthiness this week and was kind of giggling and they're using an analogy right I use this analogy imagine you had a horse but you told the horse it couldn't stop it just had to keep going so we were talking about taking a break right 
or pushing on. Um, and even the judgment that might creep in when you're witnessing others who are taking a break if you don't, okay? So, so imagine you have a horse and you say it can't take a break and it just has to carry on. And we both started rolling about laughing, saying, well, that horse wouldn't be producing very good activity, right? It's going to be like really tired and really plodding on. It's not going to have any vitality to itself. And we were kind of laughing at ourselves and that analogy, right? And how we need to bring that. We say, of course, the horse needs a break. Of course, it needs like fresh food and water and a rest and maybe even some love and attention put on the horse, right? We need all of that too. And if someone isn't giving you that, maybe within your household, you can bring it to yourself and give it to yourself because that is true, true worthiness. So let me repeat that mantra one time. I am worthy of all the love, abundance and amazing experiences that I want. Okay. And then in the Get Unstuck show, we love to show you something that you can use during the week that is going to help your health. And I actually made something really, really simple this weekend. So it's, I've put it here in this jar and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So I went for a walk yesterday and there were a few things that I was looking for on that walk. One of them was elderberries because I've spoken about that in the Get Unstuck show before. It's really important that we take elderberry syrup in the winter to give us our vitamin C. And the weather's been unusual this year, hasn't it? And the elderberries came out really early. So on my particular walk yesterday, I couldn't find any. Uh, there was one particular tree that does normally have them that they were all out uh, and didn't see any other elderberries on my walk yesterday. So what I collected instead, instead was rose hips. So these look a little bit like, there's two different types actually, but the round ones look a little bit like a tomato. Uh, growing upside down on a bush, right? They're smaller and they're more um, orangey, more orangey, pinky orangey than a red, red tomato. But actually when they're really ripe, they do look very, very red. And then you get, I think they're Chinese or Japanese ones and they look more like, what's the shape? Like a little oval, tiny little oval growing upwards on a tree. And with the um, rose hips, they are extremely high in vitamin C, like the elderberries. So that's an alternative that you could collect at this time of year. And what I've done with them before is cut them open, pull out the seeds, chop them up and dry them. And that becomes a tea. But if you haven't got time for all of that, don't let that stop you. You can buy rosehip tea. So you come and purchase that. But yesterday I made this instead, which is a syrup. So all I'd done was literally chop the rose hips up, add some water and simmer it for 20 to 30 minutes. And all the recipes online say to add a load of sugar, but I didn't do that. It tastes delicious just as it is. So this was it's been used for centuries, really. They used to pay children to collect them and they used to use them as like syrups on things and maybe like put on your porridge. But you could make you could use this just as a cordial. You could take it off a tablespoon or we just had a sort of a small shot of it yesterday. So rose hip syrup or rose hip tea is a really good thing that you could include in your diet this week. So let me know if you've ever picked them, seen them, drunk them, used a syrup bought them have you used rose hips in any way we would love to hear or would this encourage you to go out and collect some rose hips this week we would love to hear okay so just rounding up now so we've covered the moon phase today uh, which is the waning crescent moon which is a good time for releasing and clearing up we've covered um worthiness today and how this may be stopping you in your life and we've used a mantra i am worthy of all the love abundance and amazing experiences i want we've spoken about something that can help you this week with your health which is the rose hip syrup or you could use a rose hip tea and the last thing i want to close with is this worthiness piece so if you feel that worthiness is holding you back with your health, is this the real reason why you are not making healthy food for yourself, why you are not getting around to exercising, why you are not taking time to rest because you don't believe that you are inherently worthy? Then we want you to invite you to join our challenge, which is starting next Monday, the 26th of September, which is called Elevate Your Energy. And the reason this ties into worthiness is we need to start taking small actions that's actually going to help our health to take back 
the power of your health, take back control, okay? And the videos are only going to be five minutes a day. So if you're telling yourself you've not got the time, this can be a worthiness issue. If you're telling yourself that you don't feel motivated or you don't feel mo motivated, this can be a worthiness issue as well. It all ties in together. So if you're struggling to find the time or mo motivation to increase your energy or increase your focus, come and join us on the Elevate Your Energy Challenge next week. As I said, the videos are only five minutes a day and this will allow you to take small actions towards your health and you'll see that it makes big changes and then you will want to carry on so this will help you shift your health so it is not here in this group it's in a pop-up facebook group so you do need to sign up to join us and we look forward to seeing you then let me know below if you celebrated uh, the queen watch the queen not interested in the queen and what you've taken from today's video it'd be great to hear see you soon